Hello everyone, this is Putnam County historian Larry Tiffin. We have been doing a series, what we call Tiny Towns and Vanished Villages of Putnam County. And today I'd like to talk about Groveland. If I get ahead of you at any point in time, while we look at newspaper articles and so forth, you can pause or you can go back to previous slides. This is from 1879 Atlas of Putnam County. Groveland was about two to three miles due east of Bainbridge on what's now US 36, or about 12 miles west of Danville. Do you see the Groveland, Groveland Post Office? You see some of the names you would expect to see. The Shepherds, Summers, Evans, Aders, Cassidy, and so forth, Graham. See the school, which is a little bit east of Groveland, a sawmill. And then the road as it went toward Bainbridge did not go due west at that time. It went on a south westerly direction, starting about where the cemetery is. We'll talk about why that happened in just a little bit. And then you see the cemetery is marked 1879, 1864. This is a close up of Groveland, 1864 map of Putnam County, courtesy of the Library of Congress. It's online. If you want to go find it. It shows what is now US 36, and then the proposed projected rail line that went through the north end of Groveland. And then if you want to pause, you can see where some of the people were living at the time. This is also 1864, larger map, shows this dashed line is projected railroad, went through Groveland, then Bainbridge, and so forth, along the Ocean to Ocean Highway. We'll talk about this as we go, explain what this is about. This is from a very nice publication called Groveland Centennial. It said, were they have the original plot of Groveland in 1854, then in addition 1857, and then the plot book where they typed out what it said. Put together by these fine ladies from Groveland, it's on file at the Putnam County Library. It's a great resource if someone is interested in Groveland. They did a really good job of pulling information together from the primary of sources many of which we will see here as we go. The first settlers came to the Groveland area about 1827. Again, you can pause if I get ahead of you, but the Evans, the Collings, the Pickets, the Wilsons, Kurtz, Aders, continuing, Shepherds, and then a group of people here if you go through the Groveland Cemetery, you'll see many of these names. Also in the Groveland Centennial, they talk about the history of the regular Baptist Floyd Township, which began 1826, very early. Formed a society and built a house of worship called Enon. The first structure of its kind in the township. And then a second one, a Palestine. That church is no longer there, neither one of them, one of them of course, but Palestine, there's uh, a cemetery. Uh, the Palestine church was kind of interesting history behind it is it was more or less not used and set empty when well, somebody basically decided he would live in it. And then he did. County commissioners found out about it, put it on the tax rolls. It's no longer uh, an exempt property. And of course, the squatter who lived in the building did not pay taxes, commissioners sold it, a tax sale. Not only did they sell the property where the church was, but part of the cemetery. And a person purchased that, a tax sale, including what they thought they owned for a time, part of the cemetery. It took a long time, a lot of legal work to get that straightened out. But the Palestine Cemetery, still there is an historic cemetery, well maintained. And then they talk about um, Charles and Carter Hunter Marion Township preached the first 
Baptist sermon, Floyd Township, 1826, followed by these other people. Then July of 1852, a post office was established at the home of Henry Pickett, which was the first house south of Groveland, and he being the postmaster, saying the mail was bought from Fillmore by horseback once or twice a week. We see newspaper article, Daily Sentinel, 1852, which basically states that fact. The postmasters of Groveland, up to 1905, Listed if you want to pause and read it, but it's kind of a who's who of the people. The Summers, Weekly Mason, Salmon Hall, James Turner, Owens, and some of the others. Was this continued 1905 when the post office came up with the rural free delivery, where now you would have your mail delivered right to your post box. Some of the smaller post offices were closed because they just weren't needed anymore. In 1854, the post office moved from Pickett's to building on Lot 7, where Daniel Summers was made postmaster. Moved from one store to another, it was located in Sort Room by Monday, Graham, which was in the Masonic Building, then located southwest corner of Lot 9, Masonic Building no longer standing. Said the mail was then brought Daniel by John, uh, John Chastain of New Maysville, who drove a two horse hack each morning, turn the afternoon mail. This is interesting. I'm not sure what time period they're talking about there, but the post office would have to set proposals to take the mail from one post office to the next. The mail had to get from post offices by some means. So what they would do is that advertise routes. There was a specific route with a specific number. And then it's a four year term, this is 1854. 1858. So you would bid on this proposed route, and if you're awarded that contract, then you were the contractor to deliver the mail for those that four year period. And this one talks about from Bainbridge by Groveland to Maysville, North Salem, Jamestown, so forth, so on, and then specific times. And then you could also, uh, it's for once a week, you could also have proposals for twice a week and then various instructions, and so forth and so on. In 1853, a company was formed, stock sold, a line surveyed, a railroad connecting Indianapolis and Springfield, Illinois, to be called the Indiana and Illinois Central Railroad. Because this railroad was proposed and platted, Groveland was created. The station was needed there, so Groveland was platted at that time March of 1854, by the Summers and the Aiders. Most of the lots were sold in the next several years, $35, $50 a lot, and so forth. Much grading was done on the railroad. New people moved in, the town grew and prospered to 1858. Then the railroad company failed and stocks were sold at auction. And then the railroad company tried to exist for a period of time. Then finally, by 1874, it was done. And this was their parcel sediment, which became basically the final sediment of the railroad. Saying only 10 miles of road had been completed in Indiana, from the Illinois line to Montezuma in western Indiana. But a lot of grading had been done in the Groveland area, Putnam County, Park County, and so forth. The first east-west road was the route path following the old Indian Trail. We're talking about road now, not railroad. In 1878, several people then formed a company to grade a gravel and gravel road from Bainbridge to Groveland. To pay for this, toll gates were established. One was Groveland just south of the store, east of town. The toll house was built. People paid to travel over the new gravel road till it was taken over by the government in 1895. The road is now known as Old US 36, which runs a little south of the current state highway. It still is a functioning road. The road ran east of town, improved about four years later, then it went west. It widened and improved then in 1932, 1933, and it was paved, and then it became the new State Road 36. 
This is a very interesting article by the former state geologist, Blasley, who lived, who was like the race in the Groveland area, Groveland Bainbridge. Very interesting informant article, 1936. If you want to pause and read this, or you can go to the Hugest Street Chronicles and download, view this article. Very nice. Talking about the history of Groveland, and so forth, so on. Saying he was a former state geologist and so forth. He's saying within the last few years, it's 1936 now, that State Road 36, otherwise known as the Ocean to Ocean Highway, completely paved the Annapolis, Illinois state line. At present, second most important highway after the old National Road going through Putnam County. They talk about after the road was paved, the old roadway, which we call now Old 36, was abandoned. But there were so many houses on that road, it was turned over to the county and still maintained as a county road. And they were saying that the early pioneers had no money to construct bridges and the abandoned portion of the old road descended a big walnut where they could, at uh, uh, the point along the railroad where they had a bridge, 1870, 1870s only a Ford, and then they had a kind of a flimsy bridge which was washed out. And then the covered bridge was built in 1900. We now call it Baker's Camp. Very interesting story behind that. But basically, it was the road went there because they could not find any other place they could get across Big Walnut Creek. That's why it doesn't run due west and due east from Groveland to Bainbridge in the early days. And then when the new 36 came in, that's when they built the new bridge and then the new road. He's talking about then in the abandoned part, which had a number of homes and so forth and so on. And then again, describing the roadway and, all, and so forth. On. Then he talked about where they used part of the grade of the proposed but never built Indiana Illinois Central Railroad for the new US 36, the portion between Bainbridge and Groveland. And that road company, the railroad, organized in 1853, talking about men of the prominent citizens of Indianapolis, Hendricks, Putnam, and other counties, including Higgins Lane and his brother, Senator Henry Lane of Bainbridge, and some Groveland men. And then it was failed. And then in September of 1858, the stock was auctioned off. But most of the grading had been done in, the, in Indiana between Groveland and Montezuma and through Putnam and Park County. They also note a deep cut still in existence on the north end of his father's little farm near Bainbridge. Malcolm Romine recently published an interesting and very informative book on Bainbridge, and he showed you where that cut was. You can see that in his Malcolm Romine's Bainbridge book. It's available at the Putnam County Museum gift shop. And then 1880, he says, a new railroad, which was built, docked at Indianapolis, Decatur, and Springfield. It was not in the applicator in Western until about 10 years later. We talk about this railroad in uh, the Rochdale presentation. Then talk a little bit about that railroad and then they use the, what was going to be uh, the bridge for the railroad for the new Highway 36 east of Bainbridge. And then the present town was non-existent of Groveland, non-existent until the railroad was proposed. So that's why Groveland became to be set, planted by Daniel Frank Summers in 1850, were actually more people than that. Talk about 1830, prominent Methodist church was organized by Reverend Harvey Collins. Log church was erected on the present site of the Groveland Cemetery, known as Pleasant Grove Church. This is significant. If you're familiar with the Groveland Cemetery, you know that the older burials were on the backside or the south part of the cemetery. That's because in the front, near the gate, near the road on the north, 
was this church. And you can still see some of the foundation stones of that church as you go in the gate. You wondered why there's a few big rocks ground level. That was the foundation for this church. Then after the church was no longer there, then they started to use that area for the burials. And that's why the burials on the north end of the Groland Cemetery are the more recent ones. They talked then about the town platted and so forth and so on. And then some of the other churches we've already talked about. And then again, some of the things then that were already talked about in that Groveland Centennial. He talked about then, lastly, is where the grandparents and his some of his family are buried and his boyhood friends. Second one, Palestine and so forth. We've already talked about some of these. And then much was expected new railway of the platters, the town. Daniel Summers had built a large two-story railway station, part of which he occupied time for a store. After the railway was abandoned, the town grew but slowly. A post office had been established in 1852, and the population by 1860 was not given in the census reports. In the census records, sometimes they would specifically say the population of a town or a village, but sometimes not. So in 1860, the residents of Groveland were just general Floyd Township residents. By 1870, they were separately reported. There were 67 of them. Then, then about the notes by 1936, there was only about 30 people. And then it goes on to talk about his family and so forth, including his maternal grandfather, Solomon Hall, who had a store in Groveland, 1861-65, sent four sons to the Civil War. One of them, Chester Hall, brought home a stretcher that suffered injuries, the Battle of the Wilderness. He had laid for three days before they could get him. Very interesting. Other newspaper articles, this is 1864. Very interesting. William Aldridge had a gro uh, nursery at Groveland for many years, very prominent. And because of the grove of trees, you kind of sometimes wonder if that led someone to name Groveland after his grove of trees. Not sure if that's the case or not, but it very well could be. Other newspaper articles, the one on the left, it's from the Greencastle Banner, March 25th, 1856, where Aldridge is basically giving a talk and some guidance about the trees and so forth and so on. And then in 1880, talking about the Bainbridge Groveland Gravel Road that we'd already talked about. You pause, read more of these if you'd like, or again, you could go to the Hoosier Street Chronicles. This is very neat. There's some photos, some of the risk schools, and a publication is called Schools in Your Hand, published 1978, I believe, by the retired teachers of Putnam County. Very valuable history of the early schools in Putnam County. They have photos that they had captured. This is from Groveland Schools, 1908-1909. For some of the people, you pause, read this if you want, or go to the library. Several of the libraries have schools in your hand. Clare Creek Schools, 1915. I'm not really sure what caught the attention over here of these people. Maybe some dog barked or something, but several of them had to look over here, see what was going on. The Florida Center School, 1924. Again, if you want to pause and read out some of these people, I actually knew some of these people when I was very young and they had significant life experience, no longer with us, of course. They're very interesting. Find out who some of these people were at that time. And finally, in the New Maysville Cemetery, there's a tombstone for the Hannahs, Tilgham and Lydia Hanna, who were murdered in their sleep in Groveland in 1861. They're buried at New Maysville in the old cemetery. We cover that story in a different presentation. If you'd like to hear about that. I hope you've enjoyed.
learning a little bit about the early history of Groveland. Again, you can research through some of the publications we've talked about or some of the newspaper articles and Hoosier Chronicles if you'd like to know more. Thank you.